Hi, I'm Lisa Haysha. Welcome to the Legacy Series. Today with me I have Shu Tezcat, and he is an amazing, powerful voice today, and he has influenced so many children around the world with Earth Guardians. And if you don't know about them, you got to go Google them. And I'm so honored to have him here today to talk about everything from what inspires him, if you want to be an activist, you know, where do you go? How do you start? And he actually helps anyone who wants to get involved and grow and inspire. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have this opportunity to speak with you. And um, thank you for having me. It's, it's very exciting. And I'm like, highlighting, highlighting voices that are, that are doing incredible things and that are kind of accomplishing things that, that nobody's done before and tackling yes. the problems that, that often go unaddressed that are very, very important, I think. Um, Highlighting those issues is, is really important. Highlighting those voices is, is very important. So, so thank how did you. you find your voice? Oh man, um, I say it's it's pretty natural. I mean, just coming coming from um, a family that was incredibly supportive, um, just of what I do and who I am. It was pretty easy to um, really comfortable for me to kind of use my voice and, 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 and always ask for what I needed. You know, my mom, my entire life growing up, my mom would tell me, "Ask and you shall receive." Mm -hmm. You know, which was really interesting because, you know, we never had a lot. Yeah. And, and, and you know, when, when we need support for different things, you know, as a family, as a, an organization, you know, we put it out there and we often get, you know, get it back, you know, just because of the good work we're doing and the good intentions that we have. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've been public speaking for, for about the last nine years. So, nine years. Yeah. But how did you start? Did your parents say, this is what we want you to do? We want you to change mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. We want you to be an activist. Mm -hmm. Or did you somehow see something on a Disney Channel and say, oh, wow, look at that guy. I want to be like um, that. Yeah. I, so it was a very natural sense of um, me wanting to really do something about the state of the planet because I felt a really strong connection to but what um, was the moment where you said this yeah. is what I want to do yeah I think just 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 feeling that connection to the earth and then all of a sudden watching this documentary um, called the 11th hour um, how old were you of, I was I think, I think I was six years old six okay yeah and um, watching that documentary after and seeing that this planet that I was just amazingly just enthralled and connected with um, really like woke me up and I was like you know, our only planet, we were destroying our only home. Um, uh. It was really intense. You know, I cried a lot and I was, I was little. I didn't understand a lot of it. Um, my father taught me that as indigenous people, we are caretakers of the land. Uh, we're, we're protectors of, of the Mother Earth. And um, when I saw that there was all these problems, yeah. you know, it's my, 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 my job to do something about it. You know, and I said, you know, how could I, how could I not act? So how did you grow up? What did you grow up uh, on the land? Did were you outside a lot? Were your parents yeah. outside? So you were brought um, up. I, I, I grew up in Boulder, Colorado, uh -huh. which is a, a beautiful city right in, yes. right in the Rocky Mountains. Um, so uh, my entire childhood, what I remember more than anything was being outside okay. um, in the rivers, the mountains, the forest. So you're always snakes, outside, connected always, to nature. Yeah. I see. And um, yeah, connecting to culture as well. My dad is is, is really incredibly um, knowledge knowledgeable when it comes to just indigenous cultures and indigenous ways of life. Mm -hmm. So being brought up with that kind of um, knowledge of diversity and understanding of, of different ways of life and, and that connection to our own way of life as well um, as Native peoples was really important for me. And a lot of the teachings that I just inherited and grew up with, um, learning that all life is sacred, you know, learning yes. that all life is connected, you know, different things that most kids don't learn. I was learning that right alongside and is, you know, I was learning how to write my name. Aww. So it's an um, interesting way to grow up that really just gave me the tools, the support, the inspiration that I need to um, do something about it now. You know? Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. that's great. So, did you go to school? Did you go to kindergarten, first grade, second grade? <laughs> or did your parents homeschool you? Yeah, it was it was homeschooling and, and um, a little bit of, you know, just different, different homeschooling programs and whatnot until third grade. I wanted to try public school. I, I loved it. I thrived academically. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mean, I made friends and that was kind of a thing until seventh grade. And then I kind of took the second half of that year off to travel. And then I went to this incredible private school called Watershed, which is like an experiential learning school um, for my eighth grade year. And then I took the first semester of off this year um, to travel again, just because I'm, I'm too busy to balance both. So I'm, I'm doing like kind of like online schooling curriculum. Um, it's really interesting trying to do the work that I'm doing yes. and be on the front lines of the climate movement also being 
normal 15 year old kid yeah goes through every challenge every other 15 year old kid goes through yeah you're sort of like a celebrity a star that is, grows up on the set yeah. so you're like one foot in and one foot mm -hmm. out everyone in their life usually when they're older has three mo three moments that transform them you are so young but you probably already had moments what are they if you could think of three defining moments in your life it's a really good question um I think I think putting it in into that context um, seems like you know three significant mile markers, right? Yeah. Um, that help shape you. That help shape me, and I think it's been rather than you know three large significant moments. It's been like you know like the flowing of a river, where there's not three significant moments that shape its its reaching of the ocean, but rather just like a constant flow that that allows it to 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 reach the sea. And mm. it was something more like that, rather than it being, you know, three large specific moments, but just a buildup of every single day of my life, you know, being nurtured and being taught and learning a little bit more and struggling and, and failing and making mistakes. And um, I'm writing a song right now called, well, I'm, I'm writing a few songs to talk about this, but um, I'm writing a song called I Am. And um, I think a really important time in my music was, was just, just definitely this understanding of this song, because I wrote a song called Who Am I? You know, Can you sing a little bit of it? Yeah, yeah. Um, performed it earlier today, so... It goes, who am I? What does this question really mean? Is it asking how you fit into society? I am a rapper, an activist, an athlete, a composer. But wait, is that all that I am? Please tell me more. I still don't understand. Do my actions every day decide who I am? Or was my destiny chosen like a grain of sand? In the desert, vast and wide, one thing's for sure you cannot hide from the person that you are, who you are to be. That changes every day depending how you live your life. Because our society tells you one thing and your heart tells you another. Should you follow your own path? Oh, that's um, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So um, how long does it take you to write a song like that? Uh, it depends. Um, I was, so that one took, that one definitely took some time, took a couple of weeks to, to write that. Um, I'm doing all my own production now, so mm -hmm. I'm producing all the music. Um, but I'm, what can't you do? <laughs> well, um, I'm working on a standing back mm -hmm. for the time. Mm -hmm. I can't do that yet. <laughs> so I want to ask you this question. I've been reading a lot about nature and plants, and they mm -hmm. say plants really talk to us and communicate with us, and that plants actually have eyes, nose, ears, but in a different form. What's, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know about eyes, nose, ears in a different form. I, I never really thought of it like that, but definitely just being able to feel a really deep, incredible presence um, when I step into nature and, and when I can, um, you know, kind of close off everything else and, and be, um, I think that's definitely when I'm like the most honest with myself. Yeah. Is when I'm on a, on a place where, where, you know, the world of people is behind me and um, uh, no, a sense of like innocence and just like returning to my childhood is like really important. I was told, you know, on top of my father that every living thing has a spirit, you know, and that was just something that really has um, stayed with me my my entire life. That, that you know, and and there's that sense of, of of a living thing. Yes. Often when people think of plants, when people think of animals, they don't think of living things, just just as we are. Mm -hmm. And just really beautiful to see how alive our world is it's so alive yeah. and that's why i love traveling so much mm -hmm. and traveling mm -hmm. alone because mm -hmm. when i go out in nature i sit there and talk to rocks and plants i hug mm -hmm. trees i'm like oh my god they're so precious and now i've been reading so much about it that mm -hmm. i don't even feel comfortable cutting flowers anymore i'm putting mm -hmm. them in a face i'm going oh my god i'm murdering these flowers and it's just a weird feeling because now I have a connection to them since I've been reading more and more about them. They are, they're alive too. They're, they're nature, they're living and it's wonderful. So you sing, you perform, you do hip hop and you speak all over the world and Obama just recognized you as a youth leader. So how do you absorb that? How do you take all that in having such a strong voice where you're influencing thousands and thousands of people? Um, it's tough. I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, and, that's what I would think like, for your age especially. Yeah, and just making it this far, it's such a really high standard for myself. And I'm, I'm a perfectionist too. So it's like um, I have really high standards for myself, which is like a good thing and a bad thing. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's like hard. Like what's your daily routine? 
daily routine mm -hmm. oh man that that changed all the time but um I'm but making... you get up do you meditate do you exercise do you work out do you mm -hmm. are you anal with your scheduling do you um uh, i'm getting into it it's been tough just because I'm, it's like traveling disrupts that and traveling makes it really hard to do that for mm -hmm. sure and you know i was just in new york for eight days so like my schedule mm -hmm. is whatever the people yes. plans it to be and i'm going into there but yeah, I mean, when I'm home, I'm, I'm making music every day. I'm, I'm working out every day. I'm, I'm rock climbing like four to five times a week. So you're pretty um, loose with your schedule. Like you'll sleep in if you have to, then you'll, because you make your own schedule. Mm -hmm. I, don't really, I don't really ever sleep in. Um, I wake up early and get as much done, like from one o'clock to three o'clock. It's usually like busy on my grind. I try to do all my calls during that time, catch up on emails, that kind of stuff. Um, and then do you have an me. assistant? No, we need many no. assistants for my team of people that are, that okay. are doing, um, a lot of the, the, the behind the scenes work with Earth Guardians. There's so how did you get a team? Well, there was a really a need for people to help us out fostering this, this amazing growth of, of um, Earth Guardian crews all over the world. It started out just you know a local crew in my community. Mm. And now there's um, almost 400 crews around the world. Almost 400? Yeah, and um, almost 40 countries and six continents. Um, so that, that kind of exploded and there's a lot of big projects that we needed to bring in people. We got chunks of funding. So we brought in a team that worked on all kinds of different projects that we moved How forward How did you with. find your team? Because that's so hard when someone wants to do something great in the world to get mm -hmm. the right people on their team. For sure. We have a lot of connections. We have a lot of connections, which is great. And, um, people But how did you do that in the beginning? Um, I think my, well, my mom, everybody knows my mom, like in the city of Boulder, everybody knows my mom and my family and the Roski family and, and my grandpa. What did, why, um, what did they do? Oh, well, my mom's been, uh, been on, she, she founded Earth Guardians in 1992. Oh, in your Hawaii. mom did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, as an accredited high school. And it was a high school that was focused on preserving and protecting the environment. Um, and that was pretty incredible. Um, my grandfather is just an incredible leader in the community. He has a sustainable community in Hummingbird Ranch in um, Moro, New Mexico. Is entirely self-sustaining. They grow all their own food. They get all their own water. Um, produce all their own energy. They're an incredible community down there. So they just they they know a lot of people. And just through what I've done, I've created incredible connections. Um, a lot of people that are on the team now are just people that have volunteered for us in the past. And all of a sudden, jobs opened up, and they had the skill set that we were looking for. Connections through them. We know a lot of people that know a lot of people as well. So that's yeah. It's just a, it's, it's like a really. Um, intricate web of people that we know that are doing good things and yeah definitely gotta pull some funding in to keep the team going though yeah so where do you see yourself in 10 years or in 20 years 10 years 20 yeah. years yep. um i get asked this question all the time and i think one one answer stays that like you know it, it definitely varies um my answer but i think one thing stays the same that i don't want to be doing this not in the sense that i, I don't want to be a part of it but i don't um to the extent that I'm working on this and the sacrifice that I'm making and, and the amount of time that I'm pouring into this. I don't want to have to do that in 10 years because I hope that the problem that I'm, the, mm. the crisis that I'm fighting in, in um, will be well enough off that I can take a step back that in the next 10 years, we will be able to make enough progress as a, as a global community that I will be able to take a step back and um, know that there are other leaders that are taking, that are taking the, the reins that are really, um, laying the groundwork for positive solutions throughout our future. Um, I believe that we can do that in 10 years, in, in less than 10 years. So I'm going to work on music. I'm going to, you know, go to college maybe. And a lot of things in the future that are really interesting and seeing how it unfolds. So, um, so you do want to have some sort of an, a life where you're just a performer and you get out there and not work this hard? Yep. And you want a family? Do you want to get um, married, have kids, or? Well, I'm 15, so I think thinking about that in is 10, like, eh, it's, 20 years? Know, possibly. I mean, it depends where the world's at and okay. like, what I'm feeling in 10, 20 years and where I'm at in my life in 10, 20 years. So I think that's all, like, you know, 
stuff in the future. I'm not really even giving that much thought at all about. Yeah, that's um, good. It's interesting. So many young kids today are feeling the same way. My generation and the generation before me, it was like, of course you're going to get married and have kids mm -hmm. or everyone's dream when I'm 25 mm -hmm. or 30. <laughs> but this generation is not like that. Mm -hmm. Very different. For yeah, sure. they're really into adventure, getting out there, being yeah. activists, that's what all I'm making to change. Say too. Yes. Oh, before I settle down or whatever and, and, and um, you know, I want to take years off and travel the world and, you know, see things nobody's ever seen. So if somebody wants to go out, they're watching this and they say, I want to make a change in this world or I want to be an activist, how do they do that or how would they get involved with what you're doing? Um, I definitely think that through everything that I've seen and all the conferences that I've been to and incredible people that I've met that are doing really good things and, and I've given tips on, on what to do, they're all telling me different individual things that we can mm -hmm. do. Overall, the theme that people are giving me and, and the things that I've understood is if we really want to address climate change, address some of the biggest issues of our time, we have to understand our connection to everything around us. And not in a spiritual sense, um, which that is also important, but I think we have to understand that the actions that we take, the decisions that we make affect the world around us. We have to understand that, that the, the, the clothes we choose to buy, that the food we eat, that um, the way we live our lives impacts the world. Because you can go out and you can you know, point the finger at fossil fuel industries all day long and it's not going to do anything. But if you realize that you know, when you buy these plastic bottles, it's going to affect the health of our oceans. Or when you choose to not bring your own bag and get a plastic bag instead, it's going to affect the health of our oceans. Or um, eating meat contributes more to climate change than anything else does, um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. It's one of the greatest contributors to climate change is to eat meat and dairy products. Cut back. Oh, um, absolutely. And I'm yeah, I mean, I've never eaten that. meat in my life. I'm working on going vegan. That's mm -hmm. tough because <laughs> um, I love ice cream. Right. <laughs> but they have rice milk ice cream. Oh, yeah, coconut ice cream. Yeah, really they do. Yeah, um, exactly. There's ways. But I don't, yeah, I don't know if they can do milkshakes without milk and ice cream. It's just sacrifices, you know. Sacrifices, yeah. Sacrifice yes. for the movement. Exactly. But, um, and, and to get involved with what we're doing and, 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 you know, start up an Earth Guardian crew or get involved with an Earth Guardian crew around you. Um, EarthGuardians.org is okay. our website, EarthGuardians.org. Um, hit us up on social media. We're on most social media sites. Mm -hmm. um, Earth Guardians. Earth Guardians with a Z on uh, Twitter because somebody took Earth Guardians with an S. Um, but yeah, so, so just definitely get, get involved, get in touch. I think what it's really about is understanding your level of interest and understanding. What has this done for you, being an activist? How has this shifted you to meet the president or to go speak in front of thousands of people and to lead thousands of people on this mm. movement? Um, I come from, you know, a, a low-income family in, in Boulder, Colorado, um, where I didn't have a whole lot of opportunities ahead of me, you know, as far as... Um, the the ideal future, you know. Yeah. Um, which which was never a bad thing. You know, I was always grateful for everything I had. I just always had like a, a less than the people around me. Boulder's a pretty well-off city. There's still a lot of poverty in there too, um, and a lot of diversity. Um, and if you if you look in the right places, so all of a sudden when I got involved in this work, people were asking me to travel to Australia and I traveled to Australia and traveled to Brazil. Yeah, what is that like to see so many places at such a young age? And not just visit, but you get to be with so many interesting people and really yeah. make a change and a shift in the consciousness of the country. Experiencing the communities and experiencing the people and seeing what people think, what people feel and how people feel about the world is amazing. It's like a blessing to be able to be a part of that. Are you keeping a journal? Uh, no. You need I to should. keep a journal and write a book. I'm working you on the book. You need to do that. Okay, you are. Yes. Working on, yeah, book stuff for sure. Um, but yeah, I should definitely journal. Absolutely. I keep a journal for, I mean, everywhere I go, I write lyrics though. So that's. That's kind of your journal. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. More and more now. So yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What got you into music? Um, I don't know. Just kind of through the activism, seeing that music can be a really powerful tool. And all of a sudden I was like, whoa, I'm actually a musician. I, I can write music. I'm a mm -hmm. pianist. I'm a, all these different things. And. I have a really good ear for music, which is definitely an amazing gift. So I can pick up most instruments and just like, what the Yeah, I think that's wonderful because it's such a great accessory to what you mm -hmm. do. If you could perform hip hop, people will listen to you more so than if you can't. Yep. You know, performing yep. music is magic. and Yeah, that'll, that'll really get people engaged. You know, sound, the beat, vibration yes. has brought people together for generations. Absolutely. Know, since the beginning of, of, of human culture. Yes. And you look back at any culture, music's been a really important, integral part of it. 
Um, except for like that one point in time when they like, banned music. In <laughs> but, you know, I screwed up. But. Yeah. Well, do you take your brother with you mm-hmm. most of the time and do you guys perform together? Yeah, yeah, we perform. We're, we're kind of a trio um, right now. Me and my brother and, and a girl named Jazzy, mm-hmm. who's traveling with us and performing. Um, she's an incredible singer and vocalist. So we definitely are looking for a solid team of, of me and my brother on vocals and then, and then a, a female vocalist. Um, to, to travel with us to a lot of the big speaking engagements. We have a lot of potential with our music, um, and just a lot of incredible opportunities to, to show that to the world. And, mm-hmm. and, to, um, and so, yeah, really working on taking our stuff to the next level and, and making it professional and making it so that we're not activists that also you know, rap, but we're, we're artists as well as we are um, spokespeople and, yes. and Earth Guardians. And you know, the music is its own thing as well because it, re- it really has the message behind our music and the actual talent that we bring behind it as well is really important to us and showing and branding ourselves as also musicians, which is important. Mm -hmm. So wisdom, what wisdom do you have that you would like to share with people, especially younger kids? Like you just met my daughter and she Mm. was so excited to meet you. She's been preparing. She put on makeup. She was all nervous. (laughs) <laughs> she's like, because she wants to like do hip hop and all that. That's awesome. So you have a profound effect. You know, she's seven and it's already, oh my God, who is he? I get to meet him and she's super excited. So I'm sure you get that everywhere. So what kind of advice would you give to someone starting out or someone wanting a career in that and activism? You know? um, everything that I've accomplished um, is not because I'm any different than any other kid on the planet. I'm, I'm a normal 15 year old that, that, you know, that has a lot less than a lot of other people, you know, was born with a lot less than a lot of other people. You have a um, strong support team though, right? That's with the, your parents yeah, that's true. and your family. That's yeah. true, support systems. And when young people don't have the support systems that I had, Earth Guardians is there to really offer the tools, the resources, the inspiration, the education that you need to build your platform off that. So, you know, I had my parents really help me find Earth Guardians. And what I want to do is build Earth Guardians so that that is there for other young people that are in need of, of that support oh, system. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so that's that's a lot of, of what Earth Guardians is and does, um, is builds that support for young people that don't have that, that kind of support in their lives. Um, It'd be great to start a publishing company with Earth Guardians and for everyone writing books or yeah. doing something yeah, for the environment, kind of like Hay House does for spirituality. Yeah. Nobody yeah. does it for, like, activism. That would be wonderful. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of amazing um, visions that we have in store for the future, a lot of big projects we want to get working on. But, um, yeah, I mean, just advice for young people that are starting up. Um, you know, I'm, 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 just a, I'm just a kid, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hilarious. I'd like to say that. <laughs> um, but That's I'm, great. I'm a jokester. You know, I, I, I'm, I hang out with my friends. Yeah. You know, I sneak out of my house. I don't recommend it. Um, you know, I, yeah, I saw I, some I videos homework. of you. You're like Sometimes. playing around a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, so I'm normal. I'm I'm totally normal, and, and mm-hmm. I make mistakes, and, and and I'm and I'm not perfect in any way. Are you and ever nervous when you get no, on stage? No, not to when speak? I get on stage. When I, like, no, no, not really, not anymore. But 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 just to, to young people that are that aren't nervous about this kind of thing or, or about doing things and stepping out of their comfort zone. That is the greatest gift that we've ever been able to, to, to receive is that ability to reach farther than we're comfortable with and reach farther than what we know because reaching into the unknown will, will, will grant us with amazing things that will come into our lives and open up doors and open up opportunities for us. And How old were you when you did your first talk? Six. Six. Okay. So how were you feeling at six the very first time? I was, you... I, was, I don't think, I think I've been more nervous at other events than I was when I was six, honestly. How many... People were in your audience. Uh, a few hundred. Okay. Yeah, three, about oh, two, two to three hundred. Say, don't mind that. Okay. But um, just keep going. Fight for what you believe in. Pursue your passion. Um, it's really, we have a beautiful, amazing ability to change the world around us, and it starts with us. It starts with one person, one kid, one artist. Um, you know, it's really. The beginning of, of of a lot and there's a movement on the rise and we we need more young people on the front lines of it yes amen to that so my final question what do you want your legacy to be Ooh, good question good question <laughs> what do i want my legacy to be yes um i want to leave a legacy that shows that um people remember me as as somebody that kind of beat the odds 
you know, hmm. a, a person that that left behind um, a world better than the one that I was born into. You know, to future generations, I want to leave behind a legacy that that from this point on, we 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 put an end to to oppression. We put an end to environmental degradation. We put an end to the collapse of ecosystems. We put an end to that. Hmm. I want my legacy to be one of, of power and one showing that this generation and young people on the earth are just as powerful as the leaders that you know have the suits and ties and are making the big decisions. We have just as much power as them. I want my legacy to be one of hope and, yeah. and one that shows that no matter who we are, where we are from, you know, what things set us back that we were born with, we can take our our love for what we do and, and change the world for the better with that. Um, I want definitely my legacy to, um, not my legacy, but the legacy of this point in time to be remembered forever because this is one of the most critical points in time that we face. Yes, we need you. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of you. Mm -hmm. So it's great you're creating this army <laughs> of yeah. do-gooders and activists. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you ever see yourself running for office? I don't want to be a politician. <laughs> okay. Um, and people have, have asked me, and you, know, you know, you should be the president. And I was like, no thanks. Yeah. You know, just because that's that's you know, I feel like that would um, just detract from 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 yeah. my passion and just my my freedom and my spirit. And yeah, and there's things. a lot of rules that go with that. You can't just be you and really get tough. your message out. Yeah. Even just like the leader of a country doesn't make all the decisions. You know, exactly. There's so much that goes into so much stress, so much. I don't think I'll ever be a politician, but I will definitely always be a poet and an artist. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me with an Yes, honor. yes.